Coming up on Cultural Capital, we talk to the amazing South African artist William Kentridge about his chamber opera slash film work, Sybil, opening tonight at the Barbican. We're picking up the precious debris of parenthood in Thing of the Week, and I'll be reviewing the marvellous new meta movie from Nicolas Cage, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. William Kentridge is one of South Africa's best known and most celebrated artists. For three nights this weekend, he's bringing his film performance piece, Sybil, to the Barbican. We caught up with him ahead of the opening night. The central story of the Sybil, a prophetess, is you would go to the Sybil and write a question on a leaf and leave it at the mouth of her cave, and you would come back to collect the answer which she had written on another leaf. But as you got to the mouth of the cave, a wind would always blow up and blow the leaves into a swirl. So you never knew if the leaf you were getting was your leaf or someone else's leaf. We've obviously taken the idea of a leaf as a leaf of a book as a page. So the Sybil's leaves are the pages of her book which swirl through the air and are gathered and show our uncertainty of being in the world. And as in this case with the chamber opera, there's a projection, so there's a two-dimensional projection which moves through time, but there are also performers in front and interacting and in relation to the projection. So one can think of it as a drawing in four dimensions. <laughs> You know, when you see anything, when you see a performance, it always is a mixture of what comes towards you from the performance and what you project onto the performance, which is obviously influenced by your mood, what you've read, what you're thinking. And in the condition we are in in the world now, with so many different uncertainties, whether it's the war in Ukraine or ongoing COVID or long COVID, all of these things, one can't but see the piece and read the texts in the piece except in relation to these other thoughts which are filling us all. I do the piece to discover what an audience feels, not to tell them what to feel. And it's as much for me to see the audience watching what I have made, for me to understand what it is that we are presenting. Is there anything more poignant than the sight in a street of a tiny single mitten lost by an unknown child? Tracy Emin's lovely artwork for the Founding Museum is our thing of the week. This tiny bronze sculpture is by the British artist Tracy Emin. It's been on, installed on the railings outside the Foundling Museum since 2010, when it was part of a much bigger exhibition of work by Tracy Emin, Matt Collishaw and Paula Rago. It speaks directly to our 300 year old story, that the Foundling Museum tells the story of the Foundling Hospital, which was the UK's first children's charity. And it was set up in the 18th century to care for babies who would otherwise have been abandoned. And mothers, when they came and left their babies at the hospital for the last time, would leave with these babies little objects, hoped to be used as methods of identification, so that if the mother, if her circumstances ever changed, and she could come back and claim her baby. And this contemporary work here is in direct conversation with some of our historic objects just inside the museum. One of the few things on which the universe is unanimous is that Nicolas Cage is in a Hollywood legend class of his own. This magnificently silly, brilliantly knowing meta-comedy takes that cast-iron truth and goes hell for leather with it, with the actor playing a gloriously self-obsessed version of himself, in debt, in need of a major role, and reduced to attending the birthday party of a wealthy fan for a million dollar fee. But is the Mallorcan olive tycoon Javi Gutierrez, played with dorky charm by Pedro Pascal, quite the harmless movie nerd he seems to be? And why are the CIA watching Cage's plane. I don't remember the last time I laughed out loud so consistently in the cinema or in such joyful union with the rest of the audience. Every Nick Cage film trope is ruthlessly sent up. Every narcissistic Hollywood star cliche brutally kicked over. Sharon Horgan isn't given quite enough to do as his cheerfully long-suffering soon-to-be ex-wife, but she gets a moment and really, and rightfully, the volatile nucleus here is Cage, a tense bundle of ferocious nerve endings flitting between self-adoration, insecurity, contempt and grudging magnanimity, often within the same 30 seconds. This is one of the most enjoyable films I've seen in months. As one one of the awestruck characters puts it, Nick Cage? So cool. For more great things to see and do in the capital, follow Evening Standard on TikTok and ES Culture on Instagram. See you next week.